Hey guys, what's up? It's Dark Mech here, and today I'm going to walk you through more of Soul's Mythic Plus guide, uh, 2 to 10 plus, and today we've got a 15 on the screen, uh, 3 affixes, Overflowing, Bolstering, and Tyrannical, so I have explained these affixes before, so I'm not going to go through them all, but there will be description in the description of them if you haven't seen any of my other videos about Mythic Pluses and the affixes. Uh, so due to Bolstering in here and us not being utterly amazing, and in a pug, we're going to break a lot of these sections up. So the first two mobs that we're going to grab are the Slaver and the Shield Maiden. So the Slavers are going to attack the tank with an ability called Fracture. It deals heavy tank damage, or heavy damage, sorry, to all players standing in line with the tank, so make sure you are behind them. Uh, they'll also use an ability called Barb Spear. It hits everyone within eight yards, and they'll also use this to pull players to them, and they'll throw muck at people, which is of really no concern. The Shield Maidens attack your tank with Breach Arm, which is a stacking reduced armor debuff. Once they're down, we're going to grab this Soul Keeper. If the Soul Keeper had been in a better spot, we would have grabbed it and killed it with the first two. However, it was on the other side of the bridge, and going and grabbing that would have mean we grabbed the birds, uh, and the birds die really quickly, which leads to bolstering. So with that Soul Keeper, we made sure it was about 10, 15%. We've then grabbed the birds, and we're going to AoE them down, and you can see how quickly they die. Um, it's the real reason we don't pull them with the Soul Keeper at high health, uh, as on low attempts when we were doing this the first couple of times uh, in lower levels, we were bolstering that to the fucking wasting a whole lot of time killing it. Next, we're going to move up to these next two packs. We're going to blow Hero, and we're going to get these packs down as quick as we can. Now, this is just one option here. You do not have to use Heroism here if your group is extremely capable and coordinated with stuns and can kill everything equally. Um, you can also go one pack at a time if you'd like, but this is just what we were doing. But you can do those options if you want to save Hero for the boss. One thing I should mention with the Soul Keepers is you need to try and face them away from your group. They do a, a marching ability called Defiant Strike, which is three marching switches. Swings. When they at the end, they'll do a fourth swing, which is a huge slam dealing damage to everyone within seven yards. Uh, they put a debuff on non tank players called Blackwater Blast. It's a splash damage ability to anyone within eight yards. So if you get Blackwater Blast, just make sure you move away. Uh, you can see here from that pack, we didn't, we did a, we did a fairly okay job in getting everything down. However, we've got uh, five stacks of bolstering on this soul keeper, and there's six stacks of bolstering on this soul keeper. Here. So two soul keepers left up with too much HP. Uh, led to too many stacks of bolstering, and this is what we've ended up with. Now, you've got to remember that bolstering is 20% extra health and 20% extra damage for every stack on them. So, six stacks, 120% extra damage, 120% extra health, along with the Mythic Plus affix already, means a lot of wasted time. So, just be aware of that. Then we're on to the first boss, guys, which is Yimron, or however you say it. Um... From a tank's perspective, he hits really fucking hard. So that's the first thing to be really aware of as a tank and a healer in here. Uh, his special ability is Dark Slash, and you need to have active mitigation up to cope with Dark Slash, otherwise it is going to cleave you like fucking butter. Um, even with active mitigation at a high level like this, it hits hard. Um, from a Protection Warrior standpoint, you are able to Spell Reflect Dark Slash back at him, so Dark Slash will actually be Spell Reflected. It's around 2.5 million, so it is well worth Spell for Reflect. Um, Death Knights were act actually able to use uh, fucking AMS, uh, anti-magic shell, um, to negate the entire effect of Dark Slash as well, so make sure you are making the most of that. He's going to cast a fear as well by the ability Screams of the Dead. So this will fear anyone within 12 yards, aka the big circle that's around him, and it'll fear you for three seconds. So make sure you strafe out of that circle if you are melee. There'll be purple shit floating around on the ground as well. Make sure you're not standing in it or running into it when you're moving out. He'll use an ability called Arise Fallen, which reses all these skeletons you can see here. If you are a ranged player and you have skeletons on you, if they spawn far away from the tank and the boss because you're standing out, please, for the love of God, run in towards your tank. It just makes it a hell of a lot easier to pick them up and it stops you from dying. Um, the skeletons don't bolster because they're channeled from within a boss fight. They're not ads bought in, so you don't have to worry about any of that in here. And there's also another ability called uh, Winds of Northrend, which is a knockback. So that is about it. But the Dark Slash uh, and the Screams of the Dead are the real two things you want to watch out for. Now you can see uh, this does go for quite some time with Tyrannical when you don't have Hero up as well, because remember we used it on the, uh, the two pool. So again, this is something that you have to weigh up. It just depends what your DPS is like and how you're going to go healing and tanking through this fight. 
Um, make sure though when he is nearly dead that you've got somebody up on the ramp. You can see someone is going up on the ramp now. I think it might have been uh, Nico, our druid, getting to near the horn, blowing the horn and takes us into this next phase. So you don't want to be wasting any time there, progressing straight into this next part. So once we're through here, we're going to, again, due to bolstering, we're going to break this uh, boat section up as well. So we're going to pull these first two soul guards. Now, the soul guards cast Siphon, which generally you would interrupt. However, on necrotic weeks, uh, or if you've got really good DPS, the amount of leech they're going to be getting isn't actually worth interrupting, and you can stop taking any tank damage or necrotic stacks by just letting them cast and killing them. Next, we're going to pull this uh, pat around the corner here. We're going to line of sight them, so we're going to get three in this one. So we're going to get uh, a swift blade, a soul keeper, and a mismender. So the swift blades make copies of themselves, which deal damage to anyone within five yards. Uh, they also gain a buff called sea legs, which grants them greater dodge and the ability to reflect spells. This can be dispelled, though. Uh, they'll be dealing fairly moderate tank damage with an ability called Sinister Strike. The Soul Keeper is the, exactly the same as before. Watch for that Defiant Strike. And the new mob here is the Mismender, which you just want to interrupt uh, the Torrent of Souls. Uh, it sprays shit at people and it heals any, any enemy mobs that it's hitting. Once they're down, we're going and grabbing these two here. So we're getting another Swift Blade, another two Swift Blades here again. So same thing that we just covered off before. Um... We don't pull the hounds in with these guys. Again, the hounds will die really quickly. Uh, if they bolster here, you're going to have a bad time and you're going to be wasting time again. So get these two down, then go and pull the hounds. When you're pulling the hounds, watch out for where the mariner is. You really, 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 really want to avoid bolstering the mariner. If you bolster the mariner, one stack is okay, but if you bolster the mariner with all these hounds, you're pretty much assured to wipe unless you're... I don't know, utterly fucking ridiculously stupidly amazing, but you're probably going to die if you do that. So once the hounds are done, pull them back. We're going to grab the Mariner now. Now, the big thing with the Mariner is the Lantern of Darkness here. Um, this does quite a bit of damage, so make sure you're using your pull, uh, your sorry, your personal uh, to try and help your healer here. Um, he doesn't do much else outside of Lantern of Darkness, but that Lantern of Darkness does hit really hard. Next, we're going to move up and we're going to grab this Grime Walker here. Now, I'm just watching. There is one more padding set of dogs, which you could see going through on the right. You can see them padding up now. I don't want to pull them and bolster the Grimer as well. So with this uh, Grime Walker here, it'll do a bile breath and it'll stamp its foot and leave green shit on the ground. Again, just make sure you're moving out of the green shit. Make sure your melee DPS have access to the boss and make sure that you are not bile breathing your group. And that is about it. He really doesn't hit that hard. It's all just about avoiding the green shit. Even standing in the green shit doesn't do that much. Just avoid spraying your group with bile breath. Watch where the hounds are and that is about it. Next, we're going to move up because we're going up the stairs here and we're going to grab this hound pack, which is pretty much perfect timing. There's three hounds in here. You can just nuke them down and it's not a problem whatsoever. It doesn't matter if they bolster because the hounds have fuck all health. We just didn't want to bolster the grime walker was the big thing. Next, we're going to move up the stairs and we are going to two champions. Now, the champions are the ones that fear. So I've just marked a skull up here and I've typed in party because, again, we're in a pug that I'm going to get the uh, interrupt on skull. So making sure somebody else has the other one. As if you get feared in here, you're not going to die if you get feared. But obviously, the big thing is we don't want to waste any time. We want to be quickly moving through here. So make sure you've got uh, interrupts assigned for the bone chilling screams, which is the fear. Once they're down, I probably should have been kiting a little bit quicker now as well, just to save us a little bit of time. You're running up here and we're going to the second boss. Now, the second boss is uh, Harboron. Um, interesting fight. He'll cast an ability called Summon, Summon Shackled Servitor. Uh, this ad will then start casting Void Snap. You want to interrupt this and kill the ad ASAP, then move back to the boss. Now, the reason that this is an interesting fight is that it's normally an absolute cakewalk. However, on 15 with Tyrannical, I actually found there was quite a bit of damage in this if people are getting hit by bad stuff and you aren't executing mechanics properly. Um, he also casts Fragment on a non-tank player in your group. This will cause three soul fragments to spawn from that affected player. They then start walking away. They have low health, so just switch to them and burn them down, but make sure you switch to them. You can stun them, you can grip them. While they're up, the player affected by a Fragment is taking damage that increases the longer those Fragments are up, so that's why you want to kill them. 
Uh, Harboron will also throw uh, his Scyther that a random player avoids standing, and that as on Tyrannical and on 15, that Scythe actually does a fair bit of damage if you stand in its pathing, so just watch out for that. Um, there's also purple shit on the ground. It looks like it actually moves across the platform. It's actually just the effect on it. It actually just stays where it is, but it, it, it's because of its effect, it actually looks like it's creeping towards you. Just make sure that you aren't standing in that. Um, as I said, generally, it's an easy fight, though on Tyrannical uh, at 15, I just found that people were taking a lot more damage than I'd actually ever seen people sort of struggle through this fight, and not that it was even a struggle, um, it was just more surprising, I felt, in here. Um, just execute your mechanics, make sure you're switching to the adds, interrupt the voids uh, when they're going off from the Shackled Servitors, you can see there's a void snap going off there, just make sure that you're interrupting them, don't stand in the scythe path. Uh, when those fragments go off as well, I should mention the player that's affected will be stunned for three seconds, so just make sure that you're not getting stunned in the purple pools of shit or anything like that. Um, and that is about it, and as you can see, this fight is going for quite some time, and I'm actually running out of shit to say on the fucking camera. Um, our DPS isn't bad either, you know, we're, we're mid-500s, uh, we've got a, the Rep Paladins doing like four and a half, so again, this isn't terrible, sort of, uh, it's not terrible damage, but you can just see how long this can go for on Tyrannical at 15, uh, and our healer is also nearly oom on it as well, so yeah. It's really not a fucking hard fight. I don't know why it became hard. Good sip. Um, so, after Harboron is down, we're going to make our way down the boat. Now, normally you would run and pull the boat and have a fucking, well, one side of the boat and you would have a grand old time. However, again, bolstering, we're not going to do that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the two champions. So, we're going to pull one champion from each side. Again, I've marked one indicating which one I'm going to interrupt. Make sure in this point that you get every fear. If you get feared into another mob, you are most likely going to cause a wipe on here. With bolstering as well, you would have to play catch up on the other pack that you pull and it would become a real fucking nightmare. So the two champions, make sure you've got your fears sorted out, interrupt them, pull them back a little bit just in case. I would probably pull them back further if you had ye little faith in your group. Uh, but make sure you get the, the bone chilling screams interrupted once those two are down, we're moving on to the next three here. So in this uh, next three, you're going to get a Miss Mender, a Miss Caller, and a Swift Blade. So the Swift Blade is exactly the same uh, as they were below when we were in the decks. Uh, the Miss Bender is also the same. Try and interrupt the Torrent of Souls when you can. Uh, the new mob is the Miss Caller here, which will cast an ability called Whirlpool of Souls. Uh, make sure that you interrupt this when you can. Uh, this, sorry. Make sure you interrupt this when you can. It's basically the same as, uh, as Torrent of Souls. It heals nearby enemies uh, and damages players, so we obviously don't want that going off and causing us to waste more time. Once they're down, we're going to pull the next two packs together, which is the four mobs. So you're going to get a champion, which we're watching for the fear, and it's our number one priority to interrupt. There's a Miss Caller in there, so again, the Whirlpool of Souls is the second interrupt priority. Uh, and then there's a Soul Keeper and the Swift Blade. So just watch for the Defiant Strikes from the Soul Keeper. Watch where you're facing it as well. You don't want it to walk off in a Defiant Strike towards someone's position and walk into another mob, a uh, group of mobs on the other side of the ship, and then drag them into you. So it's it's fairly important as you go along here, you're trying to save as much time as you can, and we were probably a little too reserved uh, going along here, but again, it's just not something that you want to wipe on, and if you've got really good coordination, you can probably progress a little bit quicker through here. However, in a pug, this is just the safest way to do it, and it's, it's why I'm doing it on the video for this. Um, once they're all down, you'll be at 92% mob count going this way, which is absolutely perfect because the last mini boss here is worth exactly 8%, which takes us to 100%. So this is the optimal way to take for mob count through here. Uh, now, Scarjul will summon adds and deal he deals fairly decent tank damage. Um, he uses an ability called Give No Quarter. This will be uh, targeted on a non-tank player. He'll appear at that targeted player's location and deal damage to anyone within 8 yards. So make sure you all move when that happens. Every 20 to 30 seconds, he will cast Debilitating Shout as well, and you want to make sure you interrupt this. With that teleport as well, be aware of where, you're, uh, where you are standing in regards to range. If you're at the back and he ports behind you, if he pulls another set of ads or something like that, again, wasting time, risking possible wipes, so just be aware of that. 
Once he is down, we are dropping down. Now, once he is down, don't bother mopping up the ads. As soon as Scargill's down, or however the fuck you say his name, uh, make sure you jump down. The other ads will just despawn. You do not need to clean them up. Jump down and start running. Now, if you're melee and you're running up the end here, you can avoid a knockback and get straight onto this tentacle, though it really doesn't matter. Um, Halia is is exactly the same. It's, it's really not that bad of a fight, though I will say in the last eight to ten seconds of this fight, I do some amazingly retarded fucking dumb shit. Um, apparently, I'd kept it together for as long as I was going to, and then I turned into a tard. Um, so, as I said, as melee, make sure you're running forward. You can avoid that knockback and get onto the uh, Destructor Tentacle straight away. As the tank, the Destructor Tentacle is pretty much all you care about. It's what you want to pick up straight away. If it melees anyone, they're going to die. They're going to get one shot by it. Um, there'll be two Grasping Tentacles up at the same time, and you can stand in between them and cleave them down. And I highly encourage you to do this. Um, Every time you kill a tentacle, it deals 3.33% uh, damage to Halia's health, and this phase ends when you hit 80%. So you need to kill six tentacles in total to push the phase, and you don't want to use Hero on this first phase, as it's really not needed. So be sure to kill the Destructor tentacles as well, because if you don't and you ignore them and you kill the other Graspings, another Destructor can actually spawn, and if you end up with two, you're going to end up with a lot of damage going out, and you're probably going to end up with people dying. So make sure you kill the Destructor tentacles as well, um, players will need to watch piercing tentacles they come up through the deck you can also fall into the holes which you want to avoid it doesn't kill you it doesn't take you out of the fight but it will stun you um, how you will also use torrent in this phase which deals damage to two random people every three to five seconds you can't avoid it so you're just going to have to take that damage um, the other ability is Taint of the Sea, which is applied to ranged DPS or the healer every 12 seconds. The debuff lasts 21 seconds and deals moderate damage. You can dispel it, which will deal moderate damage to the target and the party as well. So once you've done this, you'll also have to avoid the turbulent waters, which are the little circles on the decks. Once you've done this, you've hit 80%, your six tentacles, uh, how you'll submerge and she will come back and you're going to pop hero and try your very best to one phaser. You still have to deal with Tain of the Sea uh, and piercing tentacles. How you will also cast Torrent, which is interruptible and you want to have an interrupt order set up to avoid getting any of these casts off. Make sure you're interrupting it. Um, she's also going to cast Corrupted Bellow, which is the purple breath and you can tell which way this is going by where she is facing though sometimes if you are like me you can really fuck that up and think that she's going left and she's actually in the middle and you're a tard standing in the middle but generally it's really easy to avoid but as I did mention in the last sort of eight seconds of this video I really do screw the pooch um you don't actually have to get Halia to 0%, which I assume most people would know, but if you haven't been in it yet or you're just sort of getting into this, this fight actually ends when you hit 70%. So this is why we pop Hero in this phase and try and one phase it, because what actually happens is that she will submerge and you end up losing more time off your timer again. Um, and this is just a one chest problem because we took, we sort of were too safe on, on some of the pulls coming down the deck and at the start we had those bolstering issues where we lost a lot of time uh, with the Soul Keepers. So if you can get this clean, it's not a really hard two chest uh, at 15. However, you do need things to go fairly right for you, especially in a pug. So again, you're watching out for the piercing tentacles coming up through the shift. You're watching out for the blue swirlies. You're not standing in them. And that is pretty much it for this fight. The torrents are going off. You can see that you want to have them interrupted. There's the corrupted bellow now, and you can see she's facing to the left, so everyone needs to be in the middle or to the right of the shift. Uh, ship. Standing in that as a DPS will kill you. As a tank, you can actually get clipped by the corrupted bellow, and you won't die, but it's obviously not something that you want to leave to chance or actually go standing in. Um... We end up getting it down in this phase. You can see we've got 3% to go. So we got the submerge. There was no way we had the DPS to one phase that we were just way too light DPS wise. Um, and you would need fairly DPS to be able to one phase this on 15. But on a 10 and things like that, blowing hero, you should be able to one phase it. No worries. Um, so that is about it, guys. I think my truly retarded moment coming up is coming up. So there's a torrent we missed. We didn't get that off. Then I run into a corrupted breath. Then I run into a hole. Then I heal it does, and I run into another hole. So you'd see I'd kept it together as long as I was going to keep it together. Um, yeah, it's pretty fucking bad. So that is it, guys. Anyway, that is Mythic Plus More of Souls Guide. Hopefully it helps you out. If you have any questions at all, absolutely 100% hit me up and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you so much for checking out the video, guys, and I will see you all next time. See you, guys.